What's up? Welcome back to our podcast, everyone. We're super excited. We have Abraham with West Capital Lending. What's Let's up, go, Abraham? Abraham? Happy to be here. Yeah, we haven't seen you in the office in a while. What's going on? We know we made some big changes. Yeah, made the switch over to West Capital Lending. Uh, main part of that switch was to be able to provide better interest rates, lower fees, yeah. and faster service for our clients. Yeah, I love that. It's We're so customer-driven in our brokerage. We made a conscious decision together. It would be a better fit for the team and yourself to better service our clients. Right. right. So how's that transition been? Tell us more about West Capital Lending and who you're partnered up with. You know, the team over there is pretty fantastic. It is. Uh, West Capital Lending is currently fourth in the nation, uh, on track to become third in the nation by the end of next month. Yeah. So it's a great team to be on. Um, personally, you know, it's going to help me grow a little more as there's a lot of industry influencers that are in the office. Uh, I'm currently actually on the Watson Mortgage team. Yeah. And it's just been a great experience and learning from them on a daily basis. Yeah, that's great because uh, like I, I think my entire team, right, Blake, we follow uh, Minwin and Watson uh, Mortgage and, you know, their content that he keeps pushing out. Right. How long have you been following him for? Man, it's been actually longer than I've actually been in real estate. I saw oh, when he seriously? first started. Yeah. Oh, nice. Before he was actually like, I don't know if he was even on Instagram. I actually found him on Facebook doing like ads and stuff about market updates. Yeah. And so I've been just kind of keeping an eye on him. And then once I got into real estate, I found him again. And he provides some great content. So I think this is going to be a huge bonus for not only for our clients, but for our team as well, just to provide more value. Yeah. I think we're like very conscious. Like, you know, right now we're, we're like really getting we're making a big push into Instagram and video content mm -hmm. and pushing out relevant content. Yeah. Right. And so it's like Abraham mentioned, it's going to be good for him because it's going to push him to be uncomfortable too. Right. Yeah. Cause he's on a, he's on a pretty big social media influence yeah. uh, team out there. And so hopefully, you know, that'll get you to get out there and create more content mm -hmm. and, you know, create some great content for your viewers. Right. Yeah. Um, that social media aspect is their big focus uh, to provide the information and education to potential clients. Um, and it's not about just pushing like their services. Mm -hmm. They want the viewers to be able to make an informed decision. Whether they're coming to us or not, they want them to be able to have the right information to make the right decisions. Yeah, absolutely. And that aligns with what we coach here at Park Group, where it's Give the people all the information that they want because they're going to get it online anywhere. And so we want to be the ones giving out as much information so that when they are thinking about potentially purchasing or doing a home, you know, right, getting a home loan or refinancing, they're thinking, oh, wait, who was that guy on social media? I saw oh, Abraham, right? Or Blake, you know, and Blake touched on it this morning because we were looking at our viewer accounts and we're getting views from anywhere from like 4,000 to like 20,000 views. Mm -hmm. And Blake's like, you've got to put it in perspective. It's like being in a room and having 4,000 people listen to your content, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so that was great perspective because it's like, man, if you're in a room with 4,000 people, I'd probably be camera, I'd probably be like stage fright, yeah. right? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. For sure. You have like 8,000 eyeballs on you. It's not easy. No. And yeah. I think we get on our own heads too. Like, oh man, I only got 4,000 or 5,000 views, yeah. but it, you know, because sometimes we do get tons, you know, hundreds of thousands of views, yeah. millions of views. Um, but if you put it in perspective, I mean, if you're in an audience of that many people, man, that's a lot of people watching it. That you know? is. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever spoken on stage before? No. No? I mean, I did the um, the seminar here. Yeah. But I mean, that I mean, that wasn't really much of a stage. Yeah, it was a, a few stage. people. Yeah, a few it's, people. It's, a, it's a stage. It I mean, starts somewhere. Yeah, it starts somewhere. I mean, I think it's like most people. Public speaking is like my worst fear. I yeah. don't like that, but... You know, doing the videos, doing that, putting show, pushing yourself out of that comfort zone is just going to really help you grow. And I think that's another great reason for you to join that team, too, is that it's going to help you grow and help grow everyone and help our clients. Yeah, it's like that's it's great because that's how we get uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? Our our stage is our camera yeah. and we're preparing ourselves to get in front of all these people and, and just give as much information as possible. And. Mm -hmm the world i mean it's changed so much like it's so easy to get out information and to get in front of viewers before you'd have to pay half a million dollars right to get a, a commercial spot on tv and now it's just so easy and it's free it's free yeah, yeah. yeah. so much potential yeah. yeah 
So what other changes have you been going through, Abraham? I know like, so you just started going out to West Capitol. They're based in Irvine. Yeah. Yeah. What else have you been training on out there? Uh, so making the transition over to that team, there's a lot of different uh, systems that they use compared yeah. to what I had before. Uh, just being able to stay on top of that uh, client relationship, um, making sure that, you know, nobody's falling off mm -hmm. in receiving communications. Uh, so that's their main focus, just building client relationships and making sure that they're being taken care of at all points of whether they're just looking to get some information about the home buying process or they're in the escrow process, just making sure they're informed kind of every step of the way. Yeah. And that's been great because change is never easy. Right. We were talking about, man, are we going to lose out? Right. It's, it was kind of like when we change the system, like within our office, where it's like, oh, it's, it's so tough because we feel like there's going to be cracks along the way. But, yeah. you know, change is bound to happen. Right. And so you just, you know, with that, you know, you're probably going to lose, you know, a few clients here and there. Or you're going to lose out on potentially, you know, some, you know, clients. Mm -hmm. But we make that change to better service, like, our future clients and right. so it's never easy but it's you know it has to be done for growth yeah it's definitely a big transition um still in the process yeah. of switching systems uh getting everybody to understand why i'm making this change some clients are feeling like well why should i move with you to the new company yeah. even though we're moving companies to better service them yeah you know overall i mean for me you know Having a 15 minute commute to now an hour commute yeah. one way is definitely a big change, yeah. you know, sitting in a lot more traffic yeah. every day. But in the end, for the clients, yeah. you know, I'll take that little yeah. bit of sacrifice. I love to that. Make sure well, it's it a good trade off because there's a lot more better places to eat out there in Irvine. <laughs> <laughs> you get all the good food out there. True. You know, me and Blake, we get. What do we get? We, we get McDonald's. McDonald's. We get McDonald's, McDonald's and coffee. You get cappuccinos, yeah. man. Good two options. So that's good, though. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. So I know we're trying to make a conscious effort too, right? And so now, to better service my our agents and our team, right? We're gonna try to get. We're try, we're trying to create leads mm -hmm. through the portal where you actually pre qualify these buyers and now send them to the team yeah. to get them into homes. Whereas previously we were doing the lead gen, right? We were getting clients and then we would have to send them to you to get pre-approved. Mm -hmm. So it's a much streamlined process for the agents on our team. It is. And then on the other end also is with the switch over to West Cap, the systems itself is very streamlined. Yeah. So, you know, from taking in their application, their docs, getting them pre-approved and then clear to close, you know, it can be as quick as five days depending on the wow loan. five that's days yeah. yeah that's crazy that'll totally help us because we're in such a right seller's competitive market, market competitive yeah. market that will you know help us gain the upper edge when we write submit offers definitely and there was what we were talking about when we met with them they have they fully pre-approved yeah that? so yeah. it is a verified approval letter so it means that everything's been checked it's essentially saying everything besides the approval uh the appraisal yeah has been approved so wow. as long as the appraisal comes in at value, the loan is good to go. Yeah, that's great. Like that a cash helps. offer. Yeah, that's exactly. almost like a cash offer. They were saying, you know, it helps us write stronger offers and be competitive in the market where we're seeing anywhere from five to 30, 40 offers coming in, right? Yeah. Uh, that's great. So I know you also try to expand your own personal business and getting licensed in multiple states. Like, how's that been? It's a process. Yeah. Uh, there's additional education courses required for every state, depending on the state. Yeah. And then the licensing process itself varies depending on each state. So we are licensed in about 28 different states through WestCat. Yeah. So I have the ability to expand my business to those 28 states as well. That's great because it also help us because we have a lot of clients moving out of state Absolutely. too. And we want to definitely keep the loans right with Abraham so that we can increase the business. Sure. So and then also you know help help them refinance in the future too. Right. Right. So let's let's take a little what do you call that? Different path. Different path or let's <laughs> let's change things up here. Yeah. Cuz I want the people to get to know us our 
personality is our team and i know we had destiny here yesterday we were talking about country music <laughs> tell us about abraham not Ooh, the lender abraham right. let's get deep let's, let's get, get deep, let's abraham. let's get personal here and let's talk about like what do you like to do like what are your personal like hobbies or you know things that get you excited it's been a while since i've done it but i really enjoy shooting mm -hmm. um not many people know this actually but i am actually a veteran yeah. of the army so thank you for your service uh, thank you for your support <laughs> just going out shooting on a consistent basis uh during the, my service time just became something i really enjoyed mm -hmm. to the point where even on weekends we would just go out a bunch of guys and go shoot yeah all the time yeah. so it's something i really enjoy quite a lot nice well it's something me and blake yeah. like we were like oh let's go shoot and go just go de-stress because there's an olympic shooting range right in chino i don't know if people yeah. know about it where the olympics were Prado shooting Prado shooting okay. right and so it's like five minutes from our office we went uh what is it trap yeah. shooting before shooting, yeah. and that was a lot of fun and like a lot of stress relief we should set that up yeah, definitely sure. yeah i'm not sure if a lot of people are gonna watch enjoy the part about shooting because you know <laughs> we're in a pretty liberal state but yeah you know hey this is what you like to do so we're gonna let people know yeah. what else do you like to do i enjoy eating yeah oh yeah we know that yeah, abraham yeah. we know that <laughs> yeah. i enjoy eating uh quite a lot but lately i'm on a carnivore kick yeah uh nice. how's that been it's been pretty easy for me, yeah. honestly. Uh, most people say they hit the wall, you know, a couple of weeks in. Yeah. But even though I enjoy eating a lot, I also am pretty easygoing. Yeah. So I can eat the same thing over and over yeah. without it getting like too redundant for me. That's yeah, the impressive. carnivore diet is pretty big right now. Yeah, I did it. I hit the wall. But <laughs> I got off of it pretty quick, about a month in. Yeah. But I'm kind of like back and forth on it right now. So it's it's been nice. Yeah, it's been slimming. It yeah. is. We're trying uh, to get Blake on it. I know you guys have been really hyping it up lately. You know, yeah. you said it's really been a big shift in your life too, right? Actually, yeah. You know, um, Min actually from Watson Mortgage mm -hmm. started the carnival really? diet too. So, wow. up on around, the bandwagon. Huh? Yeah, the whole team. <laughs> I know quite a few people have been jumping on it. It's like it's yeah. huge on Instagram and TikTok too. I think people are there's like huge influencers out there all yeah. doing carnivore now. You know, the health benefits, the overall just feeling of like not being as bloated or a lot of people have like less brain fog so they're thinking clearer making decisions easier oh, so it goes against what a lot of people say is like too much meat is like bad for your heart or something like that right no yeah it's supposed to be like cholesterol we should get our we should get our clients on it then yeah. get our clients you know? on it yeah Less we don't brain fog yeah, yeah. <laughs> think more clearly <laughs> think clearly while you're making a purchase no. so what else i mean of course like a carnivore diet you like to shoot if you have a day off what, what do you like i mean so typically like what are you doing now typically you know i enjoy spending time with my family mm -hmm. um really big on family having that family time so above all things comes down to it i'll prefer to spend you know time with the family it doesn't have to be like a big event or anything just kind of being in the same space yeah everybody doing their own thing but just being there yeah i think it's kind of like all of us. everyone in the office is kind we of got a like great on culture here. Yeah. Everyone's kind of on the same page of what they enjoy, what the goals are. Mm -hmm. I think that really helps everyone work together a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone gets along here. Yeah. And that's what I love. Absolutely. Right. right. So let's, I mean, Blake, what, what's, what's been, let's, let's touch on what Abraham, we were just talking about yeah. social media because like last year, even two years ago, I would have never heard of the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. Now everyone's talking about yeah. it, right? And that's the power of social media. Absolutely. And that's what we keep talking about. And that's what we're trying to do, right? Yeah. Is grow our social media <clears throat> presence. Take us along your journey of your mind space every day of why you're putting out content and why you're creating content and what's that been like for you? It's really just providing value, right? Um, I know in the beginning I was only doing home tours and that's still a majority of what I post. Um, but now I'm trying to make that transition to more of the one-on-one -on -one content and more educational side too. And the same thing, I kind of like men, like, you know, I'll usually at the end of the video, I'll be like, Hey, you know, whoever you trust, you know, reach out to them. Like if we're talking about the new build, right? Yeah. Like make sure you bring your preferred agent because you don't want to go alone because you'll waive your rights. So yeah. just kind of giving them that 
the information and letting them decide who they want to work with. Yeah. Right? Cause you know, people got family, friends or long term agents. Um, so I just want to provide value and whoever want, sees that value wants to work with me is kind of what I'm trying to aim for. Yeah. I love that. And that's what, what Abraham touched on earlier, how, what, what's mortgage and Abraham is, you know, they're, they want to get the information out mm-hmm. and whoever you choose to work with, you know, as long as you're informed, you know, we want to bring as much value to you as possible. Exactly. You know, and so I love that where we don't give the pressure. It's like, hey, call me, call me. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm the only agent you should be working <laughs> with, right? Yeah. But yeah. I see that all the time. Like I don't know if it works. Yeah, I don't you know. know. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like the long old school way of doing like sales, quote unquote, right? Yeah. Like they're just trying to they're only doing it to bring value to themselves, yeah. really, right? Yeah. So I think trying to help just the general public. I think that's a big thing because for a lot of our clients right now, been following them for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes, you know, six months plus a lot of the times and a lot of these clients, they appreciate the fact that we are just making the continuous effort to mm-hmm. just like keep in touch, right? Follow up with them, make sure they're on the right path. And just being able to like not pressure them and help guide them through the home purchasing process. And then at the same time, you know, we have clients who come over to us because they felt that pressure from other agents and lenders. Nice. Yeah, don't worry. It'll cut out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks like the camera. Oh, there it goes. No, that's a picture. (laughs) (laughs) You can always chop it all out, right? Yeah. What time is it? We got a couple more minutes. Unless you want to just end it now. It's 3.35. I mean, we got time. I'm just saying. Did you want to cover some more stuff? This one's a little awkward. We gotta get more comfortable. Get more comfortable just talking about well, let's shoot the breeze for like five minutes. <laughs> All right, let's shoot the breeze. What's up? What's up, guys? <laughs> What's going on? What's going on with uh your Chino Hills property? Which one? The one that uh Oh man. Are they gonna so... are they gonna before or do you think i don't know so we so i have this so we're in escrow uh it was originally listed at 1.65 we offer 1.55 we settled at 1.6 mm-hmm. uh the appraisal came in at 155 which we originally <laughs> offered and so the seller's not willing to budge uh they did some concessions with repairs and so that was cool but it's probably like two thousand dollars in repairs for us it's it like dog, some dog yeah. doors getting repaired and so my client sent me over the house that actually hit the market last weekend when we opened escrow and I was thinking, oh my God, this house is going to come back to haunt me. <laughs> I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> and today she sent it over and she's like, can we go see this house? So I'm actually going to show it tonight around six o'clock. So nice. everyone keeps saying if it was up to them, they'd probably go with the second house just because of the price point. It could use a little bit more updates, uh, but my clients were going to repaint and redo the flooring and the the remodeled house anyway. Anyway, mm-hmm. huh? it's about the same square footage. It comes with a casita in the back, That's and it's huge. about mm-hmm. forty five hundred square foot more on the lot in Chino Hills. So, what's the price difference on this one? It's listed at one point six. So oh. they just did a massive eighty thousand dollar price reduction. Wow. So now it's at the same price we're in escrow at. It's a bigger house on the other side of the street. So the one that we're in escrow in overlooks the city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This one overlooks the hills. So I, I don't think but the trade offs that big. So, but you get the casita and you get a bigger lot. Yeah, and if my client likes it, obviously, you know, we're gonna, you know, make the cancellation and move, you know, go to the next one. But it kind of, you know, these are tough because the listing agent on this one is actually a friend of mine, and so you know, we don't want to do business like yeah, that. But unfortunately, but at the end of the day, we're here to take care of our clients. Yeah, clients are yeah. number one. So yeah, I think most agents will understand that too. Though. Yeah, it I happens. Mean, it happens. Is, I mean, we already talked about it. He was like, "Hey, if your client's not happy, just send the cancellation." It just sucks because he's on vacation. Yeah, you know, I'm, <laughs> like, vacation I'm like, I'm like ruining for you. I'm like, bro, 
And his text was, he goes, when I come back, I want a commission check. I don't want to do an open house. (laughs) So we'll see how it goes, though. My clients might not like it. You know, yeah. You sometimes know. we think you're going to like it. They're going to like the home and they don't. You sometimes know you times. think they're not going to like it. And they're yeah. like, oh, my God, I love this That's house. I need true. to get. I'm like, what? Yeah, It makes no sense. But yeah. at the end of and the day. And then sometimes you walk in, you're totally catfish, too. Yeah. Like, oh, man, this is nothing what I thought <laughs> yeah. it was going to look like, you know? Everyone doesn't know what that feels like because he gets to sit at his desk <laughs> and, like, you know, get to work from here. We're out on the road, man. We're out on the streets, like, showing constantly. Yeah. So yeah. Abraham's got the Christian job. The Christian job. I don't know. Man. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> Abraham, Abraham you guys might have problems. to show some homes, but it's tough getting some of these clients to fill out the application, get in the paperwork, you know, and it's especially when they're slow about it in the escrow process. Yeah. Like a lot of them feel like, what's the rush? They're in escrow. They, yeah. they have their contract, but they're not understanding that. As lenders, we have timelines to keep. Yeah. By law, we have certain timelines that we need to keep as well. So the more they delay, it just delays the whole process. Yeah. And then they get upset that we're constantly asking for, hey, when are you going to send this in? When are you going to do this for us? So, Yeah, I know that's like one of the difficult parts. I think Esther mentioned on it earlier. She was like, hey, me and Abraham had a buyer consult two weeks ago <laughs> in person. Yeah, And he said, they're going to go home and start the paperwork process right away yeah. and now they have, they have the they've responded her since yeah. that day yeah. right that's like like i don't understand that but i mean i understand that that's part of the business because mm-hmm. you know you give out all the information and then they leave here and they're like oh my so excited that i can actually make this home purchase and then life happens for everyone yeah. you know and so that's kind of you know it, it happens and so we roll with the punches but of course yeah what's the, what's the number one okay so everyone tuning in what's the number one difficult part of your job as a lender when dealing with clients it's having them understand that i'm trying to provide the information for them to be able to make the best decision for themselves yeah Um, a lot of people think that i'm trying to push for like a commission Mm -hmm. Um, but honestly you know That's why I always lay out options and say, hey, these are the options that are based on your situation. It's your choice. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to try to force you into one type of loan or the other. But at the same time, my advice would be X compared to Y or Z because of these reasons. Right. And then from there, again, just having that follow up with requested information yeah like if we need an updated pay stub yeah. we need the updated pay stub you can't argue with me and say yeah. i sent you one three months ago yeah. Yeah. like why do you need a new one yeah you guys are very because it's you're dealing with the banks and there yeah there's so many processes and underwriters and they need to make sure all the i's are dotted and the t's exactly. are crossed because they're about to lend you six hundred thousand yeah. dollars to buy a home over a 30-year term and you know, people and they default literally on these loans all the time. Balance this down to the penny. Yeah. You know, it's not just this, oh, it's a six hundred thousand dollar purchase. Yeah. What's a penny or two? Yeah. It needs to match down to the exact penny. Yeah. That's so, crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So all you people out there, we're not pushing you guys because we're <laughs> we're chasing commissions. We are trying to provide as much information to you as possible. Definitely. Yeah, there you go. I got your back. <laughs> all right. All right. Cool. All right.